Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I've got myself a bag of kitchen scraps. It's uh, just enough to feed two bins. Got some veggies, some fruits, and the bins that are going to be getting fed today aren't even bins. As a matter of fact, they're bags. So it's going to be that European Nightcrawler Vermi Bag Mini over there in the corner, as well as down here on the lower shelf, the Vermi Bag Tote in which we've got the African Nightcrawlers. So we'll save these African Nightcrawlers for last. We'll pull the the frame that's holding the European Nightcrawlers over there out and um, we'll poke the camera down into there to see how things are progressing and we'll apply a feeding to that bin. Uh, but that one's going to go quick. We're surface feeding so we're not picking through the material, we're not inspecting the worms or anything like that. We're just adding food, recovering, and one other little additional thing I plan to do in both of my vermi bags today, which is something I've already done in all the rest of my tubs, is adding a layer of plastic. Sheeting across the top, um, in addition to the paper and cardboard layers that cover the material today, that additional layer of plastic, I believe, is going to help a lot, because in my other bins, it's helped tremendously. Holding in the moisture, preventing it from evaporating away, and... Um, you can already see on the Vermi Bag Mini, I've got bubble wrap surrounding the entire container going all the way around, um, attempting to prevent the water vapor from evaporating through the material out the sides. But the one thing that's definitely still missing is something that's actually covering the material within the bin to keep any moisture that's trying to evaporate off the surface um, right there in the container, in the material. And I got a good feeling that that which has already worked really well in the tubs is going to work just as well in these vermi bags. So let's get them fed. Let's get that additional layer of water vapor protection barrier on these. And, um, and it shouldn't take too long. It's only two bins. So let's get to work. You can tell with the addition of these additional layers of cardboard and paper, I've been trying hard to prevent any evaporation to come out through this uh, vent. There's um, a nice mesh here and it's great if you've got enough dampness and humidity and moisture in your air, but since it's been so dry, since my house utilizes forced hot air as well, which also produces very dry air, um, I tend to have air that sucks moisture out of things, so it's very dry, very dry air. So um, let's see if we can get a little bit better look at what's happening down in here. I do see a couple gnats, a few little flying insects running around here and there. Doesn't seem too dangerous though. It's down here that you start to see more of them hanging out on this piece of cardboard. I always thought that the, the lid on the container would help with the um, intrusion of insects, but I guess maybe not. <laughs> Uh, let's get this other light over here. Let's see if that helps any. Now, I'm not going to sweat it now because it's not really my mission today to deal with insects. Luckily, it's not too severe, so I'm not going to sweat it. But, you know, it's just one of those things to take note of just in case an opportunity to deal with it easily and quickly arises. But offhand, I can't think of anything that I could do about it, so I'm just leaving it to be. Now, now once we finish feeding, the added layer that we're going to be putting on is this. It's this piece of plastic. It's just a plastic bag. And I just folded the, um, the handles into the bag. But I think this is almost a perfect fit to give this bin some good cover, keep the moisture down in the bin. And then on top of that will go that piece of newspaper, that piece of cardboard, the other piece of cardboard. But I think this will be the, the best spot to position this piece of plastic to aid in the um, retention of moisture in the bag. So like we've been doing lately, we're only going to peel back these loose paper shavings just to get enough of a view of the last feeding to make a determination of, you know, how things are doing in here, if everything's stable and well. And I believe it's safe to say that today after it's been 12 days since this bin was last fed so after 12 days i believe we can say that the the worms did a very really nice job breaking down the um the material for the most part here 
it was cantaloupe, chunks of cantaloupe. So here's an example of a piece of cantaloupe that's not even been consumed entirely yet. Uh, the skin of it is always going to be the last to go. The meaty part of it is almost gone, except for that little bit that we just uh, saw. Here too, a little bit of the meaty part is still here, as on this piece here, but compared to what was thrown in here 12 days ago, these are really just um, minuscule scraps. So I think it is safe to say that it's time to add more food. That was the original plan, and we're sticking to it. So let's go grab some chow. All right, so these are some plums that went bad. They're kind of frozen together, but they're not extremely hard, so I can separate them a little bit here. And how about this big hunk of, I guess it's cabbage, maybe. It's a good size hunk of a, maybe stem of a cauliflower, some sort of a large veggie. And then besides that, we've got a variety of small chopped items, another piece of plum here, some more stem of, I don't know what, cauliflower or whatever. This stuff was provided um, compliments of my mom, so I checked in on her yesterday to see how things are. Didn't stay long, didn't come in close contact, <laughs> just <laughs> stopped over there to pick up some kitchen scraps to feed the worms. And this is about half of what she gave me to give to the worms. So this will be what this bin gets today. We, uh, we usually like to, although I didn't do it on the last feeding, we, um, we like to add grit sometimes to the food that we give our worms just to aid in the digestion process. And since I didn't give this bin any last time, it's going to be a little bit extra generous on the grit today. And another staple food item is the used coffee. There again, I'm just going to use about half of what I bought down here to the wormery to feed with today. And that's going to be their nice, generous feeding. And I'm sure if we were to go another week and a half, two weeks, on not feeding this bin, they would be just fine. There was still scraps from the previous feeding. This food will start breaking down for them soon. And now the added bonus that they're going to receive is this extra layer of plastic membrane here across the top, which will hopefully result in more dampness down in the bin. I do like the fact that this paper's got a nice dampness to it, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what the result is to um, the addition of this extra layer of plastic. My hope is that it's gonna have those paper shreds pretty much drenched and condensated moisture dropping back down. And, you know, as long as we're on it, might as well include that too. We'll let that get nice and wet and the worms can have at that as well. And then we'll just use the cardboard as the layers to place up on top of the plastic. So I've got good feelings about how this is gonna work, keeping my fingers crossed. Hopefully it's as successful as it was in the other tubs. Um, but this is a bag, and it's a much more breathable container, so we'll see if it helps. I hope it does. All right, let's get on to the Vermi Bag Tote with the African Nightcrawlers. So here, too, on the Vermi Bag Tote, you'll notice again, this container has a nice, large, ventilated screen to allow for a nice airflow. However, when it's a little bit dry in your bin, and it's a little bit dry outside of the bin, um, you know, you want to do everything in your power to preserve moisture in your worm bin so you uh, you block off that vent and you hope for a more humid day when you can actually make good use of it but for now it's just best not being used all kinds of tiny mites flying insects larger insects the um I don't know just I guess maybe the the bag itself is the only place I don't I don't see insects of you know this variety in my regular tubs just here in these vermi bags I'm not sure and the, the dryness in here is what it's been it's not worse than it's been it's pretty much stabilized I believe so here again you touch the paper materials here at the top of the surface and they're not too bad 
they've got a little bit of a moisture content to them but they could be more moist I think for sure now this um, this piece of coffee filter here is indicating that my last feeding occurred down here again it was 12 days ago and it would have been the same material I was fed to the other vermi bag it would have been chunks of cantaloupe melon and that's just one of those sort of foods that doesn't last long you know it's very soft very easy for them to eat so we'll uh, we'll probably see very little if any of the cantaloupe they got last week but there are other foods that have been given to these worms and um, are still just in progress because they take a great deal of time to break down such as these two pieces of corn we're always checking in on the corn to see how things are progressing and wow it's got hardly any weight to it it almost feels like they've you know kind of burrowed down into the middle of it but yeah it's very very light it's pretty cool and um, I think you might have spotted a couple of the worms that were hanging out right below the corn well, it seems like they appreciate the corn it just takes them time to work it down and consume it I'm just trying to get a sense of what this is down here very low oh, okay it's a um some of the bedding I used once upon a time. It's a uh, egg carton, cardboard egg carton. I had thrown it in here as the bedding for a feeding at some point recently. So we'll, uh, we'll just dig down into this old feeding zone a little bit to create a, an opening where we can add a little bit more food so they'll just receive the remainder of what I bought downstairs today because these are the only two bins I'm feeding today and here's the other corn cob pretty light almost as light as the other one but that was that one was really surprisingly light but they're working them both down quite nicely pretty soon I'm sure it's just gonna crumble in my hands if I try to pick it up but for now it's still recognizable as a corn cob now we're not going to add any bedding, we're just going to add some food because it looks to me like we could probably use some of this existing bedding that's already in here. I'm just going to try to shred it up a little bit more and um, we'll use that as the foundation to rest this next feeding on. We'll, uh, we'll return these two older large chunks of food back down into the feeding zone there and here I'm just going to try to inspect a couple other pieces of food as long as we're in here this looks like the half of a um, mango mango pit yeah and you can see little worms I, I always seem to find very very tiny tiny worms hanging out on the mango pits they really like it never seem to find really big worms hanging out on the mango pit just really 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 tiny ones like that one right there so we'll let these guys get back to work too. Place that food back down into the middle. And into here, we'll add the food. That's the remainder of everything else that I've got. So here, instead of plums, this is a pile of strawberry. The leaves and the cuttings of a nice big portion of strawberry stuff down into the feeding zone and some other things that are easily recognizable celery carrots and not much else that looks like the pretty much the extent of what this feeding is going to consist of we may have given the other bag a little bit more food than this one but this is a nice generous feeding too so I'm sure they'll appreciate it again we're going to provide a nice generous helping of grit And we'll just deplete the remainder of the coffee we have. All right, I like what I'm seeing here. I'm starting to grow a little bit concerned because I was almost deliberately leaving a long period of time. I don't think it was really accidental. I, I feel like I did it deliberately. I wanted to give these vermi bags a little bit of time for the worms to just kind of work the food that they've got there already. I think I was just observing that there was um, a little bit of a glut of food developing in these bags. I just wanted to extend the period between feedings to give them time to get caught up to what had been given to them so far. 
And it seemed to me like they'd done a good job. And I also tried to restrict myself from going overboard on today's feeding too, so I limited the amount of food I gave them as well. And I think that as the temperatures start to warm up, now that we're on the beginning of spring, I believe it's now maybe the first week of spring, um, the temperatures here in my basement, it's not a heated basement, so the temperatures down here in the basement will eventually start to increase. And I believe that the warmer temperatures will um, hopefully bring an increase in the worm activity here in the night crawler bin. Um, you know what? Before we cover everything up here, we'll stick to tradition and we'll use this piece of coffee filter as an indicator of where we last fed the worms, just in case we forget. At some point we might start switching around to not feeding down the middle. Maybe we'll feed in the corners or along the edges or something. And we'll always have a device that we can use to mark where we last fed. Now, I'm going to just try to use everything I came down here with. So instead of taking this bag and throwing it in the trash, we'll proceed with putting this one sheet of newspaper, flat newspaper down. That's got some worm castings on the bottom side of it. And on top of that, we're going to add the new layer of plastic. So this was the same bag that my mom presented this stuff to me in yesterday. And what better way to give it a nice recycle than to just throw it in here with the food that came in it. It's a perfect size, even provides for a little bit of airflow around the sides, but will hopefully generate a whole bunch of condensation that will drop right back down onto that piece of paper, soak through, and keep everything beneath it nice and damp going forward. Now, since this did work so well in the tubs in which I've got my red wigglers, um, Really hoping that this works well here too. Shouldn't be that much different. Hopefully we'll get good results, but only time will tell. So we'll have to see. Um, let's leave this be for another, you know, week or week and a half. Uh, maybe we won't wait so long. Maybe we won't wait 12 days again between feedings. Now that it's warming up, and since I will be very curious to see how the moisture retention is improved by this plastic, I got a feeling we'll be back in here sooner than 12 days next time. So um, let's wrap it up with this. Let's put this bin back on the shelf. Let's get things cleaned up, but that's boring. I won't bother you with that. I'll take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for keeping me company. I hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, like always, please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's really appreciated. Also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well. That's always appreciated too. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. Bye now. Thank <laughs> you.